I understand too, depth wise, there's different players that would be ahead of Amari Gainer. Also, this year he dealt with some injuries, but still, that is exactly where I'd like to see Amari <coughs> Gainer play. <so> definitely. <coughs> Get that mic, bud. Dang. Are you, bless you there. Is, every, is everything I'm, all right? I muted one mic, not the other. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw like spray come out of your all mouth right, too. Like, relax. like Windex coming out. You need to wipe off the camera. Relax. <laughs> that laptop is filled with COVID. And relax. Nastiness. Hey guys, it's Terrence Nan. You're listening to Hear the Spear presented by No Game Day. Go Dose. Hey, what's up? This is Peter Ward, aka E Dub, in the house. So we're listening to Hear the Spear presented by No Game Day. Go live, go Nose. Hi, this is Charlie Ward, and you're listening to Hear the Spear, go Nose. This is Terrell Fuckley. You're listening to Hear the Spear presented by No Game Day. No Bloody. But perhaps better known as the greatest corner to ever step on a football field, Dion Primetime Sanders. The great Dion Sanders, my brother. What's going on, man? I could, I could wake up to that greedy every day, man. That was awesome. Hello, those fans. This is former Seminole Derek Brooks, and you're listening to Here's the Spear, presented to you by No Game Day. James Wilder Jr. What's going on, James? Thanks for having me on. SSOD, Florida State or Die, and go no. William Barnon Floyd. Gentlemen, what's up? What's happening, guys? This is Logan Robinson from Here's the Spear, presented to you by NoelGameDay.com. We are here in 2023 on a fantastic Wednesday evening here in Tallahassee. Florida State finishing off the 2022 season in Orlando, defeating the Oklahoma Sooners to reach their 10th win of the season for Minor Bell and his third year. With me this evening is Dustin Lewis, our editor-in-chief at NoelGameDay.com, and down below is our lead Basketball writer Austin VZ. Gentlemen, how's it going? We are in a new year, guys. Going well. It was a long week in Orlando, but excited to be back in Tallahassee, get a get a little relaxation in. And then of course back at my, back at Old Faithful today, Dope Campbell for some recruiting. So it never ends. New year, new computer. I'm feeling good. Re- ready for another good year of podcasting. Hopefully, hopefully continue to grow. Out of the closet? Well, you know, I was never in the closet, but, you know, go ahead. get your jokes off. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, a new year, uh, you know, you were telling me in the production meeting, Austin, you got a new camera for our lady listeners on the show. So just, just, just I'm glad computer, you got that. New computer overall. No, you... From PC to, <laughs> oh, to, the, to the Mac. We're, we're, we're Apple boys uh, over here now. And, you know, uh, better, welcome. Better, 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 better camera comes with it. But mainly you got okay. it with the camera. Yeah, you know. And for the lady, yeah, for the lady listeners. Yeah, all our viewers of them. now. <laughs> <laughs> we do wait till Miss Carol comes on here from Facebook. She'll be dropping in soon. But uh, yeah, uh, that was a, that was a wild year, twenty twenty two year. We'll have a full kind of breakdown. There's a lot of news to kind of go over in this week's episode. So maybe next week's. Although we do have a special guest lined up for next week for you guys, which I think a lot of y'all listening and watching will be pretty stoked about. I know that we are. So keep an eye out for that announcement sometime early next week. Uh, But yeah, a a lot of growth. We saw a lot of growth, both in listeners, viewers, engagement on here for the show. So I had a whole ton of great guests last year and looking forward to doing the same. Now that is the off season, Uh, the show doesn't stop though. We're going to try to, bring a lot of content for you guys all throughout uh, the next couple of months, definitely leading into spring, you know, b- basketball coverage still continues really the Baba, the Baba season will start soon. So. One week, one more week. That's right. The coverage, the coverage does not stop whatsoever, but uh, there yeah, is well, no off season. Uh, there, there is really no off season. There really is no off season. Definitely when you have a 10 win season, we're kind of at that caliber now guys to where, when everything happens, we've got to get it out as quickly as possible. And there's a really excited fan base after Florida State getting that win down in Orlando. Um, but it was really nice getting to meet a lot of you guys throughout the season, too, at games, out of town, in New Orleans. When we're going out to get lunch, like there's just different kind of uh, just different kind of vibes right now around this Florida State fan base and looking forward to get to know a lot more of y'all throughout it all. So with me, uh, I already did the intro to that, so that's a great start to 2023. <laughs> 
But if you're listening on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Spotify, hit the like button. Share with all your friends. We deeply appreciate it. Definitely, if you're on YouTube right now, hit that like button. Before we get started, hit that subscribe button too, because a lot of videos are about to be coming y'all's way throughout this off season. So let's get started, gentlemen. I, I think first off, we already did our recap. You guys can go back and watch that video, our instant reaction to that. But just final thoughts on Florida State getting this 10th win, beating Oklahoma down there. Uh, you know, Jordan Travis throwing over 400 yards. Uh, you know, Johnny Wilson over 200 yards. Jared Verse being Jared Verse. Treshawn Ward being your leading back. I mean, just so many different kind of storylines. And to finish off the 2022 season, Ryan Fitzgerald getting the game-winning field goal against Oklahoma last couple thoughts here on that bowl game guys an impressive performance from Florida State you know getting down early in a game like that we've seen it I would say a lot of the postseason you know there's been a lot of wild comebacks in these bowl games and we saw it yet again in the cheese bowl Oklahoma credit to them for coming out motivated despite missing some starters and some key players on their roster and really punching Florida State in the mouth, but they were able to get that massive swing in the second quarter whenever Oklahoma scored the touchdown, but the holding penalty pushed it back and they ended up missing the field goal. And then Florida State turned it into the the touchdown and the two point conversion. So really a 15 point swing right there. And from there, the Seminoles just kind of, it felt like found their footing, rallied a little bit and put together a, a tremendous second half. I mean, almost 600 yards of offense. Yeah. I think you would have liked a better performance maybe from the defensive backfield and maybe up front a little bit against the rushing game, but you've got to credit Oklahoma. That tempo was absolutely insane. And and honestly, they had a really good game plan coming into this one. And credit to, like I said before, credit to them for what they're able to do. But Florida State, in the end, pulled it out, got that 10th win, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. Uh, the 25th, um, 10th win season for the program in school history. And, you know, a milestone for Mike Norvell was actually his first ever – bowl game win in his head coaching career split between Memphis and Florida State and just now a ton of momentum for the Seminoles going into the offseason in 2023 and we'll get into some of these guys returning but man it really looks like this roster is going to be very strong next year it, it, the game definitely felt like it was a game for Florida State you could tell that Florida State had never been to a bowl game before where compared to Oklahoma who's got a veteran quarterback got Brent, Brent Venables who's been there with Clemson you know, they, they know how to prepare for those bowl games and Florida State just hasn't been in those situations up until up until last week. So you, you could tell that through the first, you know, quarter and a half uh, of the game. And like Dustin said, once they found their footing, it was a much, much different game. Um, I wish Trey Benson could have gotten 10 more yards to get that a thousand yard. Season. I, think, I think that has to be a little bit disappointing because the offensive line was talking about that pretty much all bowl season was getting him that a thousand, get him that thousand for him to come up just short has to be a little bit disappointing. Um, but nonetheless, good victory. It, it, it's huge to get 10 wins for this program, and next year's going to be really, really fun. That's a good point. They had to learn how to win in the postseason and now finish it out with 10 wins, more than what Mike Norvell combined during his first two years at Florida State, only eight over those first two seasons. So it really shows the trajectory that this program is on at the moment, and like I said before, with the amount of guys coming back and the quality transfers coming in, maybe they'll add a couple more to that list before everything's all said and done. This is a an experienced roster from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot, a lot of momentum. And to see Trey Benson get that close, it was that close. Uh, and then on the other side, seeing Trey Sean Ward being the leading back, 80-plus yards on the night. Um, you know, that was kind of Trayshawn Ward, though. We saw it early on in the season. There's one back that could kind of just only find success going north, and that was in New Orleans where he was the one. And he did against Oklahoma to finish off the season. We'll get to Trayshawn Ward electing to enter the transfer portal in just a few. But just, just a lot of momentum. I think that's the biggest key here. And work is not done. And I loved hearing Mike Norvell at the press conference with Jordan Travis. Uh, Jordan Travis is now fully acclimated to the Mike Norvell process and how this program is ran. And the work is not done and it's not even close. And I think that just goes to show the amount of, you know, focus there is now in the, in the locker room that Florida State has built into. So uh, just just overall, a uh, fun way to end off the season. The crowd looking at it in Orlando compared to LSU and Purdue, just not even close. I think, I think 
I think the amount of people that were at the LSU game, maybe like like 10, 12 people, about the same amount of people that were in that hotel a couple nights before. I mean, no, I won't go too far into that. I won't go too far. But uh, yeah, uh, just uh, not, not, a, not a great turnout there. But on Florida State's fan base side of things, they had everyone in attendance for that. It was a, it was a nice and, – and the Cheez-It Bowl, too, they were great. You know, the sponsor there. Yeah. It was great with the media, great for the players. Um, you know, it just couldn't turn out any better. So a nice way to finish off the 2022 season. We'll do a full kind of grades, position groups, coaches, yada, yada, yada. We'll probably do that in the coming weeks, but there's too much to cover right now for this week's episode. I could Let's get jump used in. to going to those bowl games, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 is, it was not bad at all. It was not bad at all. Um, you know, you kind of get pampered a little bit and enjoy a good time definitely this is like the first time actually being able to spend some time with the other members of the beat too which i thought was really cool some that you and i dustin are not used to doing because we haven't been credentialed for that long we haven't been able to go to a bowl game and you know travel and be around some of the beat but being able to hang out with them all throughout the week was was really nice and to get to know them better too i'm pretty sure with some of the tomahawk nation guys we were up till 4 a.m I don't know why or how that happened, but uh, it was nice to kind of get to know those guys and hang out. But uh, Tomahawk Nation dudes are good people. Uh, Let's jump into one of the biggest things immediately right after the Oklahoma game. The biggest one of the biggest questions on everybody's minds, if you're FSU fan, is if Fabian Lovett would be returning to Florida State in 2023. He did not dress for the game against Oklahoma. He had then announced just a couple days later that he would be returning to Florida State and play for the Seminoles next season. How big of an announcement is this, guys, for Florida State and what they plan on doing? Because it seems now what, when you're bringing Jordan Travis back, you're bringing Trey Benson back, a, a handful of other guys too and starters. It seems like Florida State's prepping for not just an ACC run for a title run, but even – beyond that in my opinion it's hard to put into words how massive this one is for Florida State I mean at least in my opinion I wasn't expecting Lovett to come back after the bowl game especially after he didn't suit up um, in the Cheez-It Bowl but you know for the Seminoles to secure this one and credit to the battles and collective also for probably putting together a nice little NIL package to get Lovett back to Tallahassee for another year this is huge for the defense not just on the field but also off the field with Fabian Lovett being one of the biggest leaders on this roster, being a guy <clears throat> that keeps younger players um, accountable and, and in check. And we saw it even when he was injured. He was out there on the practice field working on different moves with guys, talking with them about different things, just trying to help the players get better, even though he couldn't physically contribute at the time. And, and I don't think it's I don't think it's a coincidence that Florida State's winning streak started whenever Lovett got back into the lineup. They were a lot better against the run with him. And, you know, we saw some of the faults without him against Oklahoma. Um, this is one that you've got to be really excited for if you're a Seminole fan. Look at this. Let's talk about this defensive line coming back. Now you've got Fabian Lovett. You landed Western Michigan grad transfer Braden Fisk, who seems like a guy who can play inside or outside at FSU. We'll see what happens. You've got Malcolm Ray coming back, who's gained experience over the last couple of years. Joshua Farmer, a young up-and-comer who also started some games, showed some real potential this year. Darrell Jackson, former Miami defensive tackle starter, he figures to get involved in the rotation if he gains a waiver to play in 2023. And then we got some younger guys, Daniel Lyons, Ayobami Tafasi, Bishop Thomas, Antavius Woody, four-star defensive tackle, K.J. Sampson coming in over the summer. So a lot of experience in that group, but also youth and talent to mold for the future. And that doesn't even factor into the equation. Dennis Briggs, not really sure if he's going to be inside or outside at FSU in 2023. So you've got to be really excited with, with what Florida State is bringing back on that defensive line and doesn't even factor into the equation the defensive ends, which just become absolute monsters if Jared Verse does decide to come back. That, that room is stacked. That defensive tackle room, we talked about a little bit last week that if you get him in, you know, what, what he does for the team just from experience wise, because he's one of the only, he's probably the only guy in that room that's got experience in the system. And, and that matters a lot for this defense and to have him be able to teach all, not just the young guys, but the, but Jackson and Fisk as well. That, that room is so loaded. It's so talented. They're gonna make such a difference next season 
not only stopping the run, but they're going to be huge rushing the quarterback as well, bringing the pressure up the middle. And the thing that's crazy to me is Fabian Lovett in the preseason, this was a guy who, in my opinion, was in the best shape of his career that we had seen so far at Florida State. It looked like he was going to be a significant contributor on that defensive line, maybe able to play more snaps than he had uh, during his first couple of years um, at FSU. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how he recovers over the offseason. And this is just a huge difference maker, you know, kind of the Jordan Travis of the defense, if you will. But a guy who's going to be a leader on and off the field, like I said before, hold guys accountable and just a huge uh, – Huge retain for FSU in 2023. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, Fabian Lovett, if you look at some of those games throughout the year, guys, when Fabian Lovett was not there and he was injured, opponents were able to find some really nice success on the ground through that interior. And Florida State also struggled in, and, and, pass, and pass rush and pressure. And we saw that at Oklahoma, against Oklahoma, uh, this last week, Florida State – kind of struggled there and I I think that's something they've really got to work on I know you grab you grab the West uh, Mich- Western Michigan transfer that defensive line that helps absolutely but you know that can't continue to be the case moving forward definitely if you you know don't have love it in the game or he's not able to go a series or something like that Florida State we saw some weaknesses throughout the year and we'll, we'll talk about that later on in the next couple of weeks but that was something that having Fabian love it come coming back fixes a lot of that and I think too Dustin you brought up a good point he's kind of is the Jordan Travis of the other side of the football field because the way that the, the success that they have um, and making stops and uh, having him return was just crazy that he got hurt at the LSU game and the amount and that amount of time that he missed was was brutal for his draft stock and I think it was a good idea for them to come back you know he, he's got a young in that he's also taking care of, but this is where NIL the battles end. I'm, I'm sure there's a whole ton of opportunities that we don't even know of uh, that now having this available creates you know maybe a higher draft stock for him after this next season. I, I agree with you too, Dustin. He came in in really really nice shape, and I, we all agreed on here this would probably be his last season. Some things don't add up that way. It's the same thing for Akeem Dent, who announced that he's returning. Uh, for 2023 some things just don't go along the lines that you thought they would Mm -hmm. and uh, this is where nil creates a really nice really just a really nice opportunity for players like this and i will say just talking about his impact even further just provides florida state with tremendous flexibility on that defensive line when you think about 2023 like i said fisk is a guy who can play inside or outside you've got the same kind of dilemma there with um, Dennis Briggs. So we could see a variety of different combinations from the interior defensive line, the defensive end group, depending on it's a, if it's a rushing or a passing situation, going to be a lot of fun for, for Odell and JP to figure out throughout the spring and the off season. Cause man, a lot of talent in those rooms, there's some real experience and then you've got to be excited about the young guys too. Yep. I, I love watching OL versus DL. That's where I spend a majority of my time during practices. And there's a lot to like about some of these young guys, definitely with Daniel Lyons, who has been giving Maurice, Maurice Smith some fits and practices. And I, and I love it. You know, Odell Hagan's a great coach. We don't have to talk about Odell Hagan's and his resume. He, he knows what he's doing and to see some of the younger talent, some prime talent, definitely, I'm, you know, looking at Keith Sampson too, a lot of other teams heavily after him at the end of his recruitment. Um, and then seeing Antavius Woody switch over from OL to DL, I, I wanted that from the beginning. He, he's just too physical. I think it's a little fits him better mentally than anything. And, you know, he, Antavius Woody has the bull rush. He, he's got that locked down, but there's a lot of things technique-wise that he can work on. And, you know, that's a, it's a great coach to have in your corner if it's going to be Odell Higgins. So a lot, a lot to like in the, in the DL room outside of Fabian Lovett. But luckily you have him alongside whoever's going to be next to him because you lose Robert Cooper too. What a, what a career, what a long career felt like for Robert Cooper, man. I mean, woo, I, I felt like Robert Cooper, I was watching him play for FSU in high school. Now I've already graduated from graduated from college. Like I feel like he's been with FSU for so damn long. It's been a while. It feels like it's been a while, but it's really only been five years. But it's a long just- time. Well, <laughs> that's when you think about college, when you think about uh, what Florida State fans have almost. been through, it's been a very long five years with all of the losing seasons and the coaching changes, the instability, the the wild stuff that happens on the recruiting trail that seems to only involve Florida State. Uh, you know, it's been a crazy five years, but yeah, 
Robert Cooper, credit to that guy for sticking around. I think he wished he would have had a little bit maybe of a better senior season, but regardless, a huge leader for Florida State on and off the field, just like Fabian Lovett and two guys that were leaders in, in that defensive line room over the last couple of seasons. He went through two lifetimes in college. I mean, what, three head coaches? Two. And that's – yeah, two. Um, still, he, he went through a lot of turmoil at Florida State, suffering through it with the fans, suffering through it with the team, going through it with the Marvin Wilson situation. Mm. You know, that, that's in that same room. He's, he's been – he's seen everything you can see as a college player pretty much. But in the end, he's, he stuck with Odell. He did. He did. And uh, one player that repped Florida State very well as a program was Robert Cooper. Uh, Dante Anderson, uh, question here, is he still on the team? Ask William. Yes, he is certainly still on the team. A uh, guy that is going to continue to probably put on some size. Uh, he kind of showed up, though. I kind of was a little surprised. He's a lot bigger in person than he may seem just looking at maybe his measurements, but Dante Anderson is going to have a big, it's really going to be crucial for coach storms. He's going to be spending a lot of time with coach storms over the this next couple of months going into spring. And then definitely throughout the latter half of the off season, going to fall camp. That's going to be his biggest thing, but you see little flashes though from Dante because during OL versus DR, you're like, wait, who in the hell is that? And uh, there's a few plays, but just the one thing that is hurting him right now is kind of size and the size advantage that some of the offensive tackles have on him. But mm -hmm. uh, yes, Dante Anderson still on the team. Yeah. A lot of potential there came in as a preferred walk on, but very possible that he gets elevated to a scholarship depending on the numbers um, leading up to the 2023 season. So definitely something to monitor there. Let's jump into some other news. We talked about him earlier, but Trayshawn Ward entering the transfer portal. This is something that we kept a close eye on throughout bowl prep. I was hearing some things that this may be the case for him to find an opportunity outside of Florida State to be a more of a primary back if, you know, Florida State's running back room is absolutely ridiculously loaded. I mean, it's just plain and simple. And, uh, you know, I, we kind of have all agreed that Trey Benson has, has won that job moving forward into the next season. Um, you know, I, I see some po different posts, Twitter, Discord, everything, you know, uh, people saying it's a big hit to Florida State's running back room. I think we can agree that you're doubt you're losing – you're losing a talented player, absolutely, but you have a lot of talent behind and ahead of Trayshawn Ward in that case. But uh, a, a player that went in to compete, had offers from multiple other schools across the country, decided to come into Tallahassee as a walk-on, compete, and then eventually earn a scholarship, get a starting job for Florida State. Um, and then continue to, you know, we've had, we had Trayshawn Ward on this show and, you know, to, for him to share his you know, him earning that walk on that, that story with us was great. And I personally am wishing him the best. I'll be a fan for wherever he goes. Um, you know, that I was a guy that represented Florida state very well, but uh, it's just too loaded of a room, man. And I don't think we're kind of done there and maybe some other rooms, uh, it's just too much talent there. And, you know, eventually carries are going to be trimmed because of it. I think you pretty much said it all there. A, a great story for Ward going from walk-on to scholarship player at Florida State, as well as sticking with FSU once they made that coaching change from Willie, to Ta Willie Taggart to Mike Norvell. And then, you know, under a new head coach who hadn't recruited him to be there, fighting to earn that scholarship. Very impressive from him. But I think just with the way the trajectory is going at Florida State, you know, when you're building your way to an elite program, even a good program that's that can be considered in the top 25 or, or whatever, this is just what's bound to happen when you have talented players on your roster and you can't guarantee everyone what they want. I mean, that's just a fact of life. You're not always going to be able to please everybody. And I think that's just kind of what happened here. You know, obviously Treshawn Ward, a very good running back probably has an NFL future ahead of him at, at some point, uh, maybe in the next year or so. He's a guy who wants to have a big year next year to boost his stock to go to the professional level. So, I mean, he's looking for 15 to 20 touches a game and that's just not something that Florida state can guarantee right now. Obviously, Trey Benson coming back in 2023, and you look at the rest of that running back room, Lawrence Toa Philly, a guy who has started and contributed for the Seminoles for the last couple of years. Um, Kaiseya Holmes, the Penn State transfer, ineligible to play in 2022, but we're going to see what he looks like this offseason. A lot of fans are hyping him up on social media already. Let's just watch him participate with Florida State's offense in a non-scout team setting first, please. And you got true freshman Rodney Hill, a guy who we like a lot, C.J. Campbell, 
expected to be back. And Florida State also signed four-star Samuel Singleton from the high school level. So once again, just like the defensive tackle room, you've got experience at the top of the room. You've got a lot of potential and young talent at the bottom of the room. And in the end, you know, just maybe not enough of an opportunity to guarantee Ward in 2023 with all those guys. Everyone loves Trashawn. You could see it from the reaction, not just from the fans, but from the fellow players as well. Just everybody loves Trashawn Ward. Um, it, it sucks to see him leave, just to see the the development path he's been on. But wherever he goes, he's going to have a, the entire Florida State fan base still cheering for him, still rooting for him, and he's going to kill it wherever he goes. Mm -hmm. a, a bittersweet situation, you know. Miner about put out some comments today and wishing him the best, and you know. That's how it's been for a lot of these players electing to enter the transfer portal, which has been great to see. A lot of them stayed practicing. We saw Mari Gaynor practicing and also playing in the bowl game against Oklahoma. And then just a few days later announces his transfer to North Carolina. But it just goes to show kind of like the what Munderwell has been able to build and in, in the locker room culture wise. And now it's now it's moved on to where Things like this can happen, and not a, not a lot of programs can have this happen. Where you've got players deciding to end their transfer portal. I want to be surprised if some of these some of this was more in house, and you know none of it was going to be. He didn't want to post anything or not whatnot. I was going to let the season go by, but just to look at his stats: last game, um, eighty plus yards, two touchdowns. Um, you know what a nice way to end off your FSU career. So wishing him the best. Like I said, we had him on the pod. If you haven't, guys. Definitely go check out that episode. Um, just a great young man that represented Florida State University in, in a, a really nice way. So I know all the comments under here, everybody's kind of bittersweet about it, but they know they do know that, you know, got to give them support on wherever he ends up going. I know there's a lot of schools. I was hearing a couple of weeks ago that there was there was some schools intrigued, first got to enter the transfer portal, but a lot of teams heavily intrigued. Uh, and he'll he'll be he'll he'll sit up nicely uh, at a few places, and I, I'm saying like some some really nice programs too. Like we're talking top fifteen, top ten programs in the country. Uh, I've looked at Ward, and so it'll be interesting to see where he ends up landing. It's an unfortunate situation, but like you said, he's got the f <clears throat> the full support of Florida State coaching staff and players. Coaches are putting in a word a good word for him from the schools that are reaching out. And, you know, he's going to get a ton of interest. Um, so far, from what I from what I understand, programs like Kansas State, <clears throat> Georgia Tech, Texas, Tennessee have reached out to just kind of gauge the interest uh, from Treshawn Ward to gain maybe some prelimin preliminary information for why he's entering the portal, what he's looking for at his next stop. But regardless, this is going to be one of the most coveted players um, in the transfer portal. And, you know, he, he deserves it all for – all the work he put in at Florida state and, you know, it just sucks to lose a guy like that who worked his ass off to gain a scholarship and very good in the locker room, supported his teammates whenever he went down with that injury and got to think a tough situation for this guy, the starter at running back for Florida state and essentially loses his job due to that injury that he suffered against North Carolina state after that Trey Benson broke out and, you know, did, did what he did this season coming up just short of a thousand yards and Ward, you know, he could have been mad about the situation, complained about it, sulked. Instead, he just supported his teammates, um, finished it off with a great performance against Oklahoma. And yeah, excited to see what's next for him. Up next on the docket, let's talk a big transfer that's coming into Florida State right here with Fentrell Cypress of Virginia, cornerback. Wow, this was a big day. I believe these were the same day, Fabian Lovett and Fentrell Cypress, if I'm well, then, correct. Yeah. I think it was less than three hours in between. Like it was Yeah. I think FSU fans were just at a state of shock at some point. And they're like, Oh, where's Jared was Jared Verse coming? Let's just end it off right now. Let's seal it and deal it. Let's go and get the college football playoff tickets uh reserved. But yeah, Fentrell Cypress, one of the top transfers. And the transfer portal, definitely in the defensive back position, but overall as a player, um, a top three player in the portal, he ends up picking Florida State and Adam Fuller's defense. Can no longer say Marcus Woodson secondary. We'll talk about that in just a few. But what 
a pickup here, which Florida State, one of the things that we've talked about throughout the whole season was the lack and the weakness at the cornerback position. Uh, looking now, Renardo Green, you've seen the rise of Azaria Thomas. You saw, too, the improvement from Jerry and Jones. Amari on Cooper start off the season, not how we had expected it to go, but then kind of seeing him get healthier and healthier, play a bit better. But, you know, one of the biggest things was in coverage with Cooper. Um, Grady Vance, you know, your leading interception leader for Florida State in 2022. You bring in Fentrell Cypress. I think iron sharpens iron. This is going to create a lot of good competition, but definitely expecting Fentrell to fight and get one of those starting spots. And uh, I, I see a lot of comments. I see all throughout the, you know, since he announced that he was coming, you know, what about Azrae Thomas and stuff? Azrae Thomas has already gotten a lot of playing time. He's going to continue to get a ton of playing time, but I think – too, we kind of overlook the season that Renardo Green had. It's just going to create a lot of good competition that is much needed in that secondary, primarily at the cornerback position. Yeah, and Cyprus, uh, one of the top transfers in the portal, Florida State, able to win out for his services over programs like Ohio State, LSU, and, I mean, a, ple a plethora of others. Florida State able to get him on campus for an official visit at the end of, the, at the end of December, and they've really caught his eye ever since. Uh a very long and lengthy athletic defensive back, I believe about six foot, 185 pounds, and just a guy who is going to be locked down in coverage at Florida State. Um, 57 tackles, half a tackle for loss, half a sack, 15 pass deflections, and an interception during his time at Virginia. And, and with Cypress hopping on board, that gives Florida State the number one transfer portal class in the country right now according to 247 Sports. Uh, Mike Norvell actually commented on the addition after it became official. He said, Fentrell is a great player who possesses the unique combination of length and athleticism. He has a huge upside and brings a proven track record of consistent playmaking into our defensive backfield. So obviously a huge pickup for Florida State. We've already got a lot of news that some veterans are going to be coming back in that cornerback room. So now you add Fentrell Cypress in alongside guys like Renardo Green, Jerry and Jones, Greedy Vance, Kevin Knowles, Marion Cooper, Zari Thomas. And then you've got some freshmen coming in, Edwin Joseph, Jabril Rawls, Quindarius, Quindarius Jones. So once again, another position group that has a ton of experience, some young talent as well to boot. And it's going to be interesting to see whoever the next defensive back backs coach comes in to replace uh, Coach Woodson, how they work with that room moving forward. And that's not even mentioning maybe a guy like Travis Jay, who we saw dress out for the first time uh, in the 2022 season against Oklahoma in that bowl game. Um, so we'll see if he fits in maybe at cornerback or, or at safety. But right now it appears that he's looking to stick around with the Seminoles possibly. Cypress was one of the 10 best corners in the country last year, a corner pro football focus. Put, putting a guy like that on this defense is exactly what they need. A guy that can absolutely lock down one side of the field, which we, we saw it a little bit with, with Renardo Green against Keishon Boutte in the LSU game, and, and he really shut Boutte down. But I feel like for the most part, he was a little up and down more than we'd like to prefer. Now you're bringing a guy at Cyprus who's just as dominant as a corner as there in this, is in the country. It, it's something that this defense desperately, desperately needed. Yeah. As, as Ray Thomas is going to get a lot of PT, he, and he's, he's going to fight. He's going to compete for a starting job. Uh, you know, made some plays there at the end of the season, definitely against Oklahoma. But, you know, Cyprus is just a well-experienced player that had a lot of opportunities to go to other schools. I think Florida State jumped in quickly, and they're also offering a starting job. And that's hard to give up to a place that is called DBU. And for him to come onto the scene where Florida State has a chance to, to make – you know, what's funny now, Florida State can now advertise, hey – make a college football playoff run. We have a chance of winning an ACC championship. You can now advertise that, that and that own and that, and that alone should bring some more ears and the, the ears listen a little bit more to, to what you're saying as a coaching staff. And, you know, I'm just now realizing, I think, I think that's something that probably Cyprus Cyprus was attracted to because there were some other schools, Ohio state too, uh, kind of was trying to get involved also, ends up picking Florida State. We'll see, though, who they end up picking. We'll transition this in just a second to the Marcus, Marcus Woodson news. But, you know, Florida State, just looking at the secondary, DeLu, you know, can't wait to be out there to watch the competition that will be in that secondary alone. It should be pretty filled with some entertainment because it was kind of already that way ahead of this this last spring. But right now, you've seen some guys grow, like Azrae Thomas, Jerry and Jones, 
um, even greedy Rado green. Yeah. And, and greedy was a shock to us because in the spring we were seeing him get beat on routes. Uh, you know, wasn't great in coverage, yada, yada, yada. And then progresses to becoming Florida state's leader in interceptions and seemed to be at the right place at the right time throughout the mm-hmm. 2022 season so th- this room is filled you know get your popcorn ready that's going to be fun to watch these guys and then i keep on forgetting but you know kevin Knowles, you know is also in that room and you know i'm interested to see what they do with Knowles. just watching in practice they've tried him out in a few different spots i'm interested to see if, if there's anything outside of the nickel position if they want to look at safety potentially you know you're bringing a keem dent back now you have shaheen brown i think Kevin Knowles is a Swiss Army knife in the secondary, in my opinion. Yeah, we'll see how it works out. Like I said, a lot of experience coming back in that cornerback room. And, I mean, I guess you can pretty much say the same thing about a lot of these position groups on the roster right now. Maybe last year, some of them coming in a little bit more unproven. Uh, and maybe, you know, just thinking about it right now, maybe right now the tight ends are the most unproven on the roster. With two guys coming in, and, and Jaheim Bell and Kyle Morlock, who you expect to significantly contribute out of the gate. But outside of that, every other room for Florida State that I can think of bringing back um, multiple starters from a season ago. So a lot of experience coming back, some really talented transfers coming in to fill the gaps, some freshmen at the bottom of the roster who can Florida State can build up over the next couple of years. I think you've got to be excited with, with the state of this roster. It's starting to become a little bit more normal after uh, the COVID years. Yeah, there, there's really only two question marks left on this roster, and that's, you know, what does Jared Verse do? And then how do they replace Jamie Robinson, which we haven't talked about it yet, but him declaring to the NFL draft leaves a huge void at that safety position. Mm-hmm. And, and, yes, you get a team down coming back. You got Shaheen Brown there. But I still like one experienced guy back there that, that can really fill that void as just a heat-seeking missile. Because we saw it in the Oklahoma game. Jamie Robinson was everywhere in that game. And having a guy that can just clean up on the on the back end of the plays is, is, is huge, and especially in this defense from last year that um, could give could possibly give up some plays, let some uh, running backs and receivers get on the edge at times. Having a guy like Robinson that can clean that up was huge. And I, I, there's not that player on the roster right now. We'll see how they uh, attack it in the transfer portal, but I, I I think that's the biggest question mark right now. It's a good point because yeah, like you said, right now Akeem <clears throat> Akeem Dent coming back. Shaheen Brown coming back, you would think maybe those two guys are probably going to be the starters opposite of each other. And then outside of that, we'll see what happens with Travis J. whether he flexes back out to safety where he began his college career. You've got four-star um, Comrade Hussey coming in over the summer. K.J. Kirkland, a three-star signee coming in who I like a lot. I think he will eventually fit in as a safety at Florida State. But, yeah, there's not a ton of depth there at safety, and it would benefit Florida State to pull in one guy from the transfer portal um, they were going pretty heavily after the Syracuse safety transfer, Jihad, Jihad Carter trying to get him in for an official visit, but it didn't work out. He ended up committing to Ohio State earlier this week. So we'll just see how it goes from here. Hasn't been a ton of um, options available in the market so far, unfortunately. Yeah, sucks, man. Definitely when a true freshman is just going to go ahead and say a dipping out, not getting enough playing time, whereas if you look to next season, one could have been back there, hence Sam McCall. Uh, um, yeah, let's move on to the next one here, which we'll just transition over the Marcus Woodson content. Uh, you know, this happened earlier. Um, uh, not kind of, not maybe a, of a shocker. I would say kind of was hearing some buzz about it that, uh, Marcus Woodson might be moving on from the program and it might've been a mutual thing from inside Florida state side, but Marcus Woodson has been hired at Arkansas, uh, to be a co-defensive coordinator, also defensive backs coach. Uh, you know, I, it's a thing where I think Florida State can get stronger. I don't think it's a, much of a major loss, in my opinion. You know, it goes – being a college coach, you've got to both do on-field coaching, take a hold of that, but also it almost means more on the recruiting side nowadays. And, you know, Marcus Woodson, it just wasn't – making it to the caliber of what Florida state wanted it to be. So this is why I think this was mutual for both sides. Um, uh, but you know, what, what are y'all's thoughts on this with Marcus Woodson no longer being Florida state's defensive backs coach and, and the future of this room, because they are going to have to hire and, and hire kind of, kind of fairly soonish. At least for me, it didn't come as a, a huge surprise. And I don't think Florida state would have let 
Marcus Woodson walk away if they didn't have an idea of maybe who the next candidate or, or candidates are going to be for that defensive backs job. It, it just wouldn't make sense if they don't know, or at least they don't think, at least in their own mind, that they're going to be able to upgrade um, moving on from Woodson here. And I mean, there are some interesting candidates on the board. A lot of people have already expressed interest in the job. And, and I think when you have to look at it, you know, Mike Norvell, he's already had to make some coaching changes in the past at Florida State. But this is really the first time where he's going out to make a hire where he can be like, you know, Florida State is now a stable program. He's proven that at least for the immediate future, him and this coaching staff are going to be entrenched in Tallahassee. He's not really on the hot seat, whereas you could have said going into the 2022 season if Florida State would have not made a bowl game, you know, who knows where the future of Norvell goes. But right now after winning 10, pretty locked in. Obviously, so I think they'll they'll be able to attract a range of candidates, both guys that maybe have ties to Norvell, ties to an assistant coach on the staff, and also guys coming out of the woodwork who are just interested in the direction that Florida State is going. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised um, if Florida State doesn't make what we would consider an upgrade um, with this hire. And from what I've been told, you know, there's no real timeline for this. They just want to get the right guy in the building for the program, whether that takes a couple days, whether that takes a couple weeks. But if you ask me, I, I would imagine this gets done sooner rather than later, hopefully prior to the end of the month. Yeah, I, I think I was more intrigued than surprised by the announcement. Um, you know, if the fans are going to be fans and say, oh, we, you know, what's we didn't need him. Um, but he, he was he was at least a decent recruiter. There's always room to improve. And I think that's what Florida State's going to try and do here is not only get a guy that can I- improve – the physical developments on the guys already on the roster, but also get a guy that's got deep recruiting ties, which a guy like Torian Gray, who's being heavily considered for the job, he has those ties. He's, he's been involved in these recruitments and has ties in, in areas that Florida State wants to recruit in. Um, it's going to be interesting to see who they do end up hiring. Um, Cause like Dustin said, it's the first time that since our has been here that he has, you know, a huge crop of guys to pick from. Maybe we should ask Cyprus. I bet Cyprus knows. <laughs> Cyprus might be the, the guy to ask on this. Yeah, I think Florida State, let's look at Mike Norvell's track record. He usually is a step ahead or he has plan B, C, D, E, and F. So I have a feeling this was kind of known for a good little while now. Um, you know, just seeing, you know, I saw some reaction from players. We, I see the re- reaction from recruits. I don't see where it's a brutal hit. You know, that sometimes you'll see it from coaches. And, man, you know, it, it takes a hit on some of these players and, and recruits on their side. But it didn't seem to be the case, I think, on the recruiting side. It didn't seem so heavy that, oh, my God, no way this is happening. I, you know, I wish I would have known ahead. You know, I think this was something that might have been kind of told ahead of time and then also just uh, maybe didn't impact some of these players as much. Let's just put it that way. So, um, I just thought that was a pretty interesting reaction from the current players and also recruits coming in that are, are coming in that secondary. I think it was mixed. I think some guys were aware of the way that things were going, and there were some guys who found out the day of from a member of FSU staff. So it, it was just you know a little different for each guy. Their reactions, you know, obviously for the guys who didn't learn about it until a couple hours before Woodson left, you know, that's got to be tough for them, especially the high school guys who just signed their letter letters of intent, what, two weeks ago today or so, and then to have their future position coach move on. But regardless, Florida State's coaching staff does such a good job where they don't isolate these transfer recruits or high school recruits with one coach on the staff. They're building relationships with, you know, if they're a defensive back, not just Woodson, but with Coach Fuller, with Norvell, with other guys on the staff. So, you know, I don't think that they're Ray, feeling yeah. just left out in the dark with uh, Woodson moving on because they've built these other um, relationships since they committed and, and while they were being recruited by Florida State. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it felt very Chris Marvish, or Coach Marv's kind of situation there. You know what I'm saying? In- and if you notice, Woodson got a promotion from from all mm-hmm. of this. He was he's named the co-defensive coordinator at yeah. Arkansas. So once again, Florida State maybe mutually parts ways with a coach and Mike Norvell uh, in the process gets them a better job. Exactly. Well, and that quote just, unquote, better job. Let's not quote. Whoa, 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 Dustin. Whoa. Better ti- let's say better title. Better title. Get them comments. Get them comments. So sure I, I, I mean, I would want to live in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I don't care what the title is. <laughs> <laughs> no. Even if they paid you five hundred K a year. 
I mean, you know. I no, that changed I'd quickly you all tonight. <laughs> it depends what his contract was originally. Yeah, that changed just a little bit there out of VZ's voice. <laughs> <laughs> just a tad bit. Dustin, you also need to move the, the mic just a little bit lower so we can see that cheese it box back there because I know that's what you were wanting the most out of this trip in Orlando. There we go. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Now we're talking. I'm, st- I'm still mad at y- y'all didn't get me one. I'm upset. Uh, I think there was a chance. No, that no, we... no, 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 look at this. <laughs> there there <laughs> might have been. There, I'll tell you what. The cheese that people literally, if it's cheese, it's if it's food, if it's alcohol, they were like, you have it all. So Dustin just didn't hook you up easy. That's why you'll be down here, though, for season well, opener next year. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll do a little Disney trip, Jesus. too. We'll do we'll do a full on. We needed to. We didn't get the. We did ride rides though. I will say we were one of the only the only beat members, of Florida State, that rode rides with the players <laughs> and the kids. So I mean, they told us that we could. So why not ride a couple rides? It was very fun watching Quishan Sap ride on a wooden roller coaster <laughs> right behind me. He said he'll never be doing that ever again. <laughs> He took up practically two. They were going to try to – all right. Oh, this is amazing. Austin, they were going to try to put – because Dustin wasn't fitting with me on the wooden roller coaster. They were going to have him sit with Quayshawn Sapp right yeah, behind we, me. We couldn't – we could not get the belt. <laughs> I was like, Sapp, just take this one for me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I it would have been yeah that might have been a hazard up there i don't know if i would have wanted to on ride that wooden roller this. coaster yeah yeah, yeah no, too I many would, football players no i would have been good on that one <laughs> yeah too many o linemen all the o linemen that's how it is all the o linemen kind of just hang around each other anyways and so that whole roller coaster ride was going to be all offensive linemen and i was already at risk but, but before uh, we get we made it through on topic here maybe just mention a couple names potential replacements for for Woodson here moving forward, just a couple. I put out an article with a, a vast amount of names uh, for potential candidates, narrowed it down to a couple so far that just makes sense from my mind. Um, TJ Rushing from Texas AM, obviously, Florida State's first defensive backs coach under Mike Norvell, shortly after hired away by Jimbo Fisher to Texas AM. Not really going mm-hmm. positive right now in College Station, maybe a reunion. Then you've also got Mike Trier, who we were talking about in the production meeting with the New York Giants right now. Florida State hired him um, as a member of Mike Norvell's first staff. He was coming in as an off-field assistant, um, had worked with Adam Fuller at Marshall as an on-field coach when Fuller was a defensive coordinator. Norvell brought in Fuller. Fuller was able to bring in Trier, who decided to go from an on-field job to an off-field job. So I think that shows probably his respect to Coach Fuller and Coach Norvell a ton there and uh, shortly after he was hired by I think Colorado or Colorado State and then the New York Giants swooped in and got him so man Mike Norvell's first offseason of hiring coaches they were just getting swooped in on but anyway Trier now gained some experience with the New York Giants that could be one to potentially come back Austin mentioned Torian Gray who has a ton of experience across college and the NFL some really deep recruiting ties one that's interesting to me doesn't really have any ties to Florida State Rod Chance, um, previously at Colorado, he was a member of Carl Doral's staff uh, before he got fired by the Buffaloes. Um, a native of Fort Lauderdale, played at St. Thomas Aquinas, so he has some ties to South Florida and has coached eight seasons um, in three different conferences with Power 5 programs. And then the last one that I have on here, Darso McBath from Mississippi State. Obviously, that program in a little bit of a flux right now with Mike Leach passing. Um, McBath actually played under Leach at Texas Tech and then began his coaching career after after a couple of years, rejoined Leach and has been with him ever since. So he's been gaining experience in the SEC at Mississippi State, a young up and comer. Maybe it'd be interesting to see what he does now, you know, now that Leach is no longer around, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Man, you know, another name that sadly – would be talked about quite a bit more, but won't be because of his new profession and the pros is Terrell Buckley, who's got to see him down there in Orlando. He's going to be coaching uh, the Orlando Guardians. Uh, we've had him on the podcast, too. You know, a guy that is very pro Florida State. Um, you know, I think timing isn't going to help this for all this. I know there's going to be a lot of comments there. I've seen comments ever since Woodson got that job with Arkansas, but you know, the XFL is going to keep him over there for the time being. But um, you know, just 
would it would be an interesting hire for Florida State. I know I, some other ones that were talked about on social media, Antonio Cromartie. Uh, that would be a lot of kids, first off, to be bringing into Tallahassee. That's one thing that we need to take a you know a good look at. That's a lot of children. That's a lot of that's a lot of elementary schools, middle schools. You know, capacity is getting higher and higher here in Tallahassee. So that's something first before you bring in Antonio Cromartie. But that'd be a fun alum to uh, bring into the A five O, wouldn't it? And man, it just never works out with Terrell Buckley, right? Because God. whenever whenever we had him on the podcast, I think that was when he was kind of in between jobs, and I think yeah, he was look he was definitely looking. I can't remember looking. if it was Norvell's first off season here or maybe second, but you know he had kind of hinted like he had some interest in the FSU job, obviously, and then now it becomes open while he's the head coach uh, in, an, in the XFL. And I'm sure he hasn't even coached a game yet. I'm sure he wants to see how that goes before maybe coming back to college. So unfortunate timing. Yep. Tough timing for Buckley, but eventually, eventually one day will most likely happen. I want to be shocked. Uh, anything else? Let's, 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 there's some quick, quick hitters here. We talked about earlier, Amari Gaynor going to North Carolina. I was on a show yesterday from a UNC radio show and, was talking about Gainer, and I was told that they will be bringing him down for a pass rush role. Wow. And I was like, How? North Carolina is going to bring him down the pass rush role? It can't happen here in Tallahassee? I understand, too, depth-wise, there's different players that would be ahead of Amari Gainer. Also, this year, he dealt with some injuries. But still, that is exactly where I'd like to see Amari <coughs> Gainer play. <So> definitely. <coughs> Get that mic, bud. Damn. Sorry. Right. Bless you there. Is everything, is everything I'm, all right? I muted one mic, not the other. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw like spray come out of your all mouth right, too. Like, relax. like Windex coming out. You need to wipe off the camera. <laughs> that laptop is filled with COVID. And relax. Nastiness. Relax. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, you know, Mac Brown and them, they're going to use them down for the pass rush roll, which – I think is what fits him best, in my opinion. Agreed. And then another one, too, got announced today that my guy Key, Key is going to be off to Cincinnati. These guys are getting some really nice opportunities with some good programs, but and up to Cincinnati, uh, going to play for the Bearcats. I, I'm wishing him the best. I don't know what their depth chart looks like production-wise. I'm not but- sure. I'm not too entirely sure, but a veteran coming out of Florida State, wishing the best to him um, and where that goes. Because, shoot, you know, you don't have Desmond Ritter there anymore. I don't know who you have at quarterback, but. You want to know, buddy? I don't. Wait, 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 wait. Emory, is it Emory Jones? Is it Emory Jones? Jones. Oh, it's right. Emory Jones. Emory Jones. It's going to be throwing to Keyshawn Hilton. With the head coach Scott Satterfield, who just played against Helton for wow, you know, however many years <laughs> he's been here since 2018 as well. So Florida State, they played Louisville, yeah, every year. He's got a nice wow. little look at Keyshawn. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, but you know, an- another player just like Trey Sean with Keyshawn, the guy that I'll be a fan of wherever he goes. So um, wishing the best of luck to him, to whoever hit to uh, his season. Then we'll keep an eye close on what Treshawn Ward ends up doing. I think a lot of schools are preparing some nice, nice incentives to get him into their roster. And you can say that about a lot of these guys that are going out from Florida state, just guys who maybe it didn't work out for them on the field, but they were still tremendous in the locker room and, you know, never went against the culture that Mike Norvell has been trying to instill in Tallahassee. So to me, it just says a lot for how many of these guys stuck around for the bowl game practices, even though they weren't going to contribute in a huge role in the cheese at bowl against Oklahoma, where, you know, you look at the Sooners, they had all those guys defect and were missing so multiple starters, contributors. It was, it was the opposite for Florida State. There were maybe two or three guys that left the team, but a lot of them stayed out there just to finish off the season with the Seminoles on a high note. And, you know, you saw Amari Gaynor, who we were just talking about. He got in a little bit on special teams and stuff. So I don't, that, that to me just shows the culture at Florida state for those guys to stick through with their commitment and, and finish things off. Yeah. The, the only couple of guys that I could think of that didn't go through it were who Sam McCall, Jarrett Jackson. And I believe Rod, Rod or, or that yeah. was it, right? I believe that's, that's it. Like that's a, that's a hell of a culture. 
that even mm. that you, even guys that are in the transfer league, only three of them don't practice and play. That's that's crazy. That is wild to see. Yeah, Jared Jackson. I don't understand that. I don't know if things ended off badly. In my opinion, like I, he was practicing, he was you know a leader in that room. I don't. I don't. I just don't know if things ended bad I don't, I don't know but you know didn't see him practice or i also don't think fully healthy either i think he was dealing with some injuries so i don't think there was any reason to stay any longer and go through ball prep like that he needed to heal in any ways and if he was intending on moving on to a different program so that might have been the case honestly and florida state upgraded anyways so there, vc's always uh, <laughs> set up there i know vc's <laughs> always that, got that stark one remarks me, there that one He's to got, me was probably a, an exit meeting and yeah, they were like, "Look, we got a feeling we got some guys coming in." Yeah, th- th- it's one of those like, "Yeah, you could be, you know, fourth on the depth chart if you want to be." You know, <laughs> damn. <laughs> I, am I wrong? Like, he was getting passed up by Joshua Farmer towards the end of the season, and now you got yeah. Fisk coming in, you got Jackson coming in, Lovett's coming back. You know, he's fourth at best if he was to stay on the roster, maybe fifth. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Odell likes a lot of uh, Daniel Lyons, too. I'll tell you that. He's gotten a lot of playing time. He secretly got uh, – I don't know. I don't have the PFF. I love that I got bought that subscription. I don't even use it. But yeah, I just saw 95 out there running east to west to the sideline onto the uh, playing field on Thursday night. So, I know that Daniel Lyons got some playing time against Oklahoma. How many cool. – do you have this – do you have it? how many snaps, Dustin? Because I know it's going to be like probably two or three since I mentioned that. I'm sure I don't have that. his snap count, but I was going to say, if I remember correctly, he was the highest graded player on Florida State's roster for the entire season. Whoa. For, oh, yeah. for defense, for defense. If, I, if I'm correct, but I might not be. What's crazy, though, is that he's going to have a whole other offseason with Coach Storms. That's like the excitement I think FSU fans should have. I know the season's over. Hopefully so. he has a couple off seasons, right? Well, yeah, but this yeah, one even know. bigger. This one even bigger to have a Joshua Farmer jump like Farmer had. Yeah, Daniel Lyons the graded out as an 87 overall for FSU and 38 snaps. So let's say that. I'll take that for a true freshman. Next closest was Amari Gaynor, 82.5. Okay, PFF is uh... – <laughs> He played hey, hey, he, he five, five snaps, snaps yeah. against Oklahoma. Five snaps. Sweet. Well. But a guy with a lot of potential. Ed Ordron. Says Ooh. Ash Dewey. Ash Dewey. Ed Ordron. Uh, don't know where what he would what do. What about him? I don't, I don't know. Uh, Ash is asking, what about Ed Ordron? Uh, you know, he's uh, probably at a Panama City beach. He is spending and- that buyout money right now. As he should. Grand old time. As Those would be should. some interesting practices because, you know, Minerville is very loud. Uh, Coach JP is very loud. I don't know, like, what rank Coach O would be at there, but it would be ir- really easy to distinguish who's speaking out there. Uh, replacing replacing what's – I don't, I don't think that's what – I don't think Ordron, I think he's got kind of higher – yeah, implications for whoever if he does want to make another stop somewhere. I think there's higher implications for him to where. And I don't think he would be a good culture fit on the coaching staff. Yeah, and they'll be a little bit different. Uh, anything else football wise that we're missing here? Yeah, Jamie Robinson. Well, yeah, Jamie Robinson announced he's going to the NFL draft. Uh, was not a shocker whatsoever. To me, I know that there was some last little chatter and uh, deal was in place for Jamie to stay for another season, but it was already kind of shocked me a tad bit that he came for this 2022 season, in my opinion. Then NIL, the early parts of NIL helped that for him to stay another year, but he absolutely should take the opportunity to go to the NFL and definitely with the way that he played this season. And I think he showed a little bit of a different play that he can bring to an NFL team, just coming down, crashing down the physicality blitzing a lot of the different ways that you can use them. Um, you know, that uh, Jamie Robinson had a great year and he absolutely should go to the draft and FSU fans should be excited to watch him get drafted this upcoming year in the spring. One of the tone setters on, on defense for Florida state over the last two years, led Florida state in tackles in 2021 and 2022, ever since coming in from South Carolina, finished with 170 tackles, 12 tackles for loss, 
one sack and five interceptions in his two years at Florida State. And, you know, it, I didn't really think him coming back in 2023, I didn't see much more he could do to really boost his stock at the college level. I, I think he is what he is at this point, and he needs to go ahead and declare and get drafted while he can. Obviously, already accepted an invitation to the Senior Bowl. Probably going to get an official invite here to the NFL Combine pretty shortly. Just recently signed with an agent, so I'm sure they're in the process of getting that done. But in my opinion, Robinson, one of the top safety prospects in the draft. And depending on th how things go for him, I I've got him third to sixth round. He, tr he tried to make things interesting, you know, with the, oh, I got a gift for y'all on New Year's and, you know. It's just a <laughs> Terrible YouTube, gift. It's just a YouTube page. Um, it's my my favorite gift, honestly. Uh, um, come but, on. You're not subscribed to Travis Hunter's? Uh, no. I'm you not. didn't subscribe to his thing, 100,000, no. to see which no. school he was picking? Uh, but, like, we, we talked about earlier. Like, he, he was he, – he kind of reminded me of Harrison Smith with the Vikings where he just cleans up all the messes. You know, he's yeah. just flying around the field doing whatever's necessary to win the team the football game. That's how he was the last two seasons, and he, he was a phenomenal player for Florida State in the back end of the defense. There was multiple tackles throughout the season to where he was the only guy left, and if yeah. he didn't make that tackle, then that's six points for him. He did that against Oklahoma too. Like, the you know, you, you that's one thing you can rely on. If Ten's out there and he's having to make the tackle, he's going to bring down and make the tackle. He's one of the best, if not the best, on Florida State's roster with that. And I think you've got to really give him some props for finishing out his career at Florida State, playing in this bowl game. Uh, I think we've talked about it before over the past couple of weeks, but, you know, this is a day and age where people don't really respect bowl games anymore. It's playoffs or, or nothing for some people around the sport um, nowadays. And, and, even, and even playoffs don't matter for some people, but go ahead. <laughs> but it was different for Robinson. You know, he made his the commitment to – this team and he's talked about before how much he loves playing with these guys at Florida state. And he could have sat out the bowl game to protect himself from a potential injury. Instead decides to play it finishes with a team high 13 tackles, um, 14th game in his career that he finished with double digit tackles in a game. And, you know, even in that game, he did end up getting hurt Twice. in the second half. He was down <laughs> for a little bit and still came back in, gutted it out for Florida state to get that 10th win and, Man, I think it just says a lot about Jamie Robinson and the person and the player that he is. Yeah, I talked with Jamie in the press conference early on in the week last last week. And, you know, to the media, it sounded – they felt shocked that we were asking that, you know, was, was it a big decision for you to play? That was just like a no-brainer for them. And it goes to show what Mike Norvell's done – with this team and the focus towards getting those 10 wins, this team really wanted 10 wins. And I think that's a great point, Dustin, him going out there, you know, getting hurt, having to go out and he comes back, gets hurt again. He's still continuing to play to where he could have can really gotten, you know, severely hurt out there and, you know, could hurt his draft stock. This was the focus of wanting 10 wins for his teammates, his brothers, everyone involved. And, you know, it's it, I think FSU fans will see that definitely throughout the offseason. Now that the season is over, it might take a little bit. But this was a special, special team. And I'm excited. You know, I know we have a guest coming on next week, but we'll have some time to really dive into this 2022 season to see, you know, the different changes, the storyline, some things now that we can recap it. There's there were some really special moments in seeing the turn and Florida State football's program. Uh, let's jump into some recruiting, d -Lo, before Austin finishes this off with some basketball latest. d -Lo, what do we got on the recruiting side of things? I know you were out there today uh, keeping an eye on a few things in the rain with Mike Norvell not offering you an umbrella. But, uh, you know, what, what, what are we looking at? What's the latest on that side of things? Beautiful weather in Tallahassee today with the rain pouring down and the lightning cracking across the sky and my phone ringing out as I got a tornado watch. So it was just awesome. You know, return to Doe Campbell stadium for the first time in 2023, always, always relish being out there, especially on days like today, but yeah, Florida state hosting an official visitor. There's a short window right now for transfers to take visits from uh, January 4th to January 8th, kind of right here before the beginning uh, of the spring semester for most colleges Across the country, Florida State, they've got one guy on campus right now, former South Carolina defensive end Gilbert Edmond and his family pulled up on Florida State's campus this morning. Perfect time, actually. The rain had stopped just enough. Mike Norvell out there 
welcoming uh, him and his family, offering some umbrellas. Thought that was that was very polite of coach. But anyway, you know, a nice, nice, uh, not get, but nice prospect for Florida State to get on campus here. Um, kind of late in the cycle, you know, they've already brought in eight transfers to this point. Two guys on the defensive line, Edmund, someone with a lot of potential, started to break out in 2022. 39 tackles, nine tackles for loss, and two sacks for South Carolina while playing in all 12 regular season games. He didn't participate in the bowl game because he entered the portal before then. And this is actually a relationship that Florida State began to kindle a little bit in high school whenever Mike Norvell arrived at FSU in December 2019. But Edmund, he had already been developing a relationship with South Carolina as well, ended up going there on National Signing Day. But now, you know, this is one where Florida State could pull a guy out of the portal, maybe not a starter out of the gate. But if you think about Florida State's defensive end rotation, you know, assuming Jared Verse comes back, you've still got Derek McClendon as well, Patrick Payton, the uh, ACC defensive rookie of the year. But Leonard Warner moving on. I think Edmund maybe has the potential to play, replace a guy like Warner in the rotation. And something that's impressive to me is just his physical development since getting to the college level. Six foot four, 215 pounds whenever he signed with South Carolina, now up to six foot five, 250 pounds. So this is a guy just like Patrick Payton and some of the other younger defensive ends, his best football is ahead of him. He's just starting to realize the vast potential within his game, and he would be instantly in that rotation, I think, for Florida State as a pass rusher. Mm -hmm. Nice. That definitely would help a little bit. You're still waiting on verse and what he wants to do, but adding more help is key definitely whenever we get into the season and maybe some depth is dropping off. Having some extra edge help, you can never go wrong. You can never go wrong in that regard. So we'll definitely want to keep an eye. Do we know – if he may, might have a t- timetable of when he would like to announce and other schools to maybe keep an eye out for here. Yeah. I'm not sure about a timetable for an announcement for the state. They are expecting him to depart from campus tomorrow afternoon. So I, I'm not quite sure yet if that means he's going to be heading to another school once he leaves Florida state or what exactly his next plans are, but there are some talented schools involved here including UF. So I think Florida state doing their best to try and lock this one down while they've got him on campus right now, trying to hopefully prevent him from taking another visit. Because we saw what happened the last time Florida State failed to prevent a visit when Keldrick Falk at FSU one day, at Auburn the next, flips to the Tigers um, during the early signing period. So I think Florida State being cautious with this one. And, yeah, Edmund would be a good get. And I guess the only other thing I got right now for recruiting um, for the 2024 class, which 2024, Tribe 24, now up on, on the clock, Uh, if you would say number one kicker in the class, Jake Weinberg committed to Florida state um, earlier this week. I actually got a chance to speak with him earlier today. Just, you know, he grew up an FSU fan. This was his dream school, been waiting on this opportunity for a while. And from what I understand, he's going to be on full scholarship for Florida state. So maybe your potential Ryan Fitzgerald replacement um, in a year or so. And just some of his stats over the last two years, 16 out of 24 on field goals with a long, of 57 yards, um, 42 out of 45 on extra points. And according to Cole's kicking, like I said, the number one kicker in the 2024 class, a five-star prospect, according to Cole's kicking. And he actually told me he's got a pretty big camp coming up this weekend. So interested to see how things turn out there. Florida State, already eight commits in the 2024 class, ranked top five in the country on basically every recruiting service. So the Seminoles already generating a lot of momentum and – they're going to have some talent on campus starting in not this weekend, but next week and the dead period lifts up. So recruits will be filing back in. And I think a lot of them will be in Tallahassee this off season. It's going to be a fun off season out there. Hopefully it's not too hot for you, Dustin. The spring More is rainy. always nice. Yeah. Well, this weather always blows January, February gets a little bit better, but January in Tallahassee is just cloudy. You get a little bit of rain, and then it's going to, like it is tonight, it's going to start getting cold and cold and cold, and it's just so sucky, sucky. But, yeah, number one kicker, 2024 class, though. We'll transition out of Fitzgerald to him. That will be something that I think FSU fans will be keeping a close eye on. But that 2024 class just continues to get stronger and stronger. And, and, you know, if you're able to hold on to a few of those guys, absolutely. But – there's a lot of discussions of where Florida State is headed as a program. And, you know, going back to like 2000, 
10, 2011, what Florida State was doing recruiting wise, you know, knowing that they're about to find success out onto the field, it's you getting kind of a little bit of some flashbacks there, in my opinion. That'll probably be a good discussion in the coming weeks on this show about that. But uh, that's a wrap for recruiting, Dila. That is uh, that's all I've got tonight. We're in a little dead period right now for high school recruiting, so a little quiet, which I'm kind of enjoying. Outside of the enjoy it, the, the phantom commitment from the kicker, and yeah, we'll see if uh, Edmund decides to go on the record tomorrow before he does depart from Florida State. I'll be out there to uh, cover that, but other than that, just pushing out some uh, stuff with 2024 commits starting next week. So that should be pretty cool. Before we move on to basketball, VZ, I think we need to make our predictions here on Jared first because we will know by next week on this on where and what Jared Verse intends on doing. Where do we think Florida State star defensive player, or what do you think uh, Jared Verse is going to do, guys? Are, are we are we leaning towards staying, or are we leaning towards going at Wednesday at 9-16? Wait a second. Hold up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he did not. No announcement. No announcement tonight. Maybe. Hey, maybe. Never know. You, know, you never know. We had the Daryl Jackson one here alive. He might. Sometime. He might like his late nights. So he 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 might. I although let, let's do this in the morning verse. Let's do it. Let's do it in the morning. So then you have all. Please day don't do it in the morning because Logan, I don't know what time <laughs> you're getting up anymore. Now that it's the off season. I, I, I know. I I will say I am really liking the yeah. sleep that I'm having this week. I'm I'm getting my week's worth of sleep, and then we're gonna get back to getting up at eight o'clock. But I'm enjoying my. I'm enjoying my sleep. I do have to say it's been it's been a long last couple of weeks. I get up about eight o'clock Pacific time. Shut up. Where do you think Jared Verse is going? If I had to or guess, he's not going. But what do you think he's picking? Oh, he's, he's staying. Going. Or, oh, he's going. Yeah, where's he going? Where's he transferring to? <laughs> yeah, he's transferring out of Florida State. Wasn't big enough. We're heading to Georgia. I don't. I don't uh, think he should. But I really think at this point he's probably going to end up coming back. Uh, you know, in my opinion, if you've got a first round grade, you should go ahead and make that leap to the NFL. And I've said before, I think he would absolutely kill the pre-draft process just with the way that that he is uh, both on the field and off the field. I think a lot of teams would end up falling in love with Jared Verse, the person, um, as much as Jared Verse, the player. But yeah, just based on how this has been going the last couple of weeks and that we haven't heard anything so far, I'm leaning towards him coming back. It honestly makes no sense for him to come back. Right. <laughs> between the production, the the physical skill set that he has, between his size, his speed, his athleticism, his mentality. effort, his mentality, his charisma, his personality, everything. It makes no sense for him to come back. And he's – I think at worst he's, what, a top 45 pick? Mm-hmm. Definitely like, second round. Like th- there's no reason for him to come back. But at the same time, the longer this, the longer this goes, you're like – is he actually coming back? The fact that it's even 50-50 is absurd. Um, I think I'm leaning towards Sim Stain right now, but like as of an hour ago, I thought he was leaving. So uh, <laughs> it can change. It changes up and down, up and down. Yeah, no, I, I, I was high on him since d you and I got to speak with him on the phone. He was driving. He was getting ready to – be traveling to Tallahassee and just instantly, you know, just kind of the way that he presented himself. He said, I'm coming in. I want to get better and I want to compete. And he did that and earned a starting job. I was, you know, I was very high on him in the spring. I said, this guy is a different caliber kind of athlete. He, he, he's a Jermaine Johnson level guy, but just younger. And that's really attractive to NFL scouts. And I'm sure he's heard some really good things. I'm sure he's heard some things that maybe he doesn't want to be late in the second round, mid second round, yada, yada, yada. But I think just the way that he presents himself and the way that he really will wake up a team D Lou, I was texting you guys. I was like, you know, Jared versus church, like he's talking shit walking into practice. Like he's getting into the running backs years. He's talking to the offensive lineman. He's talking shit to coach Atkins, Florida state's <laughs> offensive line coach. That's just, <laughs> who Jared Verse is, but for a first year guy, just a couple month guy in the spring doing that, that was just something we hadn't seen in Florida State's football program. But he 
could chirp and talk, but also back it up. And we saw it in practices. He would go against Florida State's best uh, offensive tackles. He'd go against Robert Scott. He would dominate there, and then he would go on to dominate. We saw him on prime time against LSU do what we kind of expected him to do just off of the people like us getting to see him at practice. It was no shock to us. The only reason he's coming back is because of, you know, the friendships that he's made, the brotherhood, and he's built that. He The only reason to be for a national championship. There, there's no other doubt about it that if that's going to be the case, that that's the, that's the reason why. There, and I understand that he can be a personal person. He can care only about himself, selfish. You, you At this point, you kind of got to be selfish and look, hey, you know, if, if there's a risk of getting injured, then I lose my draft stock, yada, yada, yada. But it, it's simply to go make a run for a playoff run. You go to the ACC championship playoff run and hopefully to be able to reach a, a national championship. And if that's a mentality that Jared Verse is wanting to bring in, I, I wouldn't give him any kind of heat if he doesn't want to. Like, go to the league. I, I want him to go to the league. I, I thought he should. But that would be the only thing in, in my mind, in my brain, that I can wrap around of why Jared Verse is still kind of not wanting – not not in making an announcement yet. He could have done this way earlier and said, you know, before the bowl game, this was going to be my last game as an FSU uh, Seminole. But that just hasn't been the case yet. I'm still wondering why this has taken a little while. I, I, I feel like Florida State's could be bringing back their, their star defensive player, along with their other star defensive player, Fabian Lovett, in 2023, right now on Wednesday at 9.21 p.m. I'm just glad he uh... – didn't get in a car accident whenever he was doing that live, man. God, that was scary. <laughs> that was scary. I, I, I want to go back and listen to that podcast. Can we pull though, over, now. please? <laughs> yeah, please, please. I was about to say, let's just end this and we'll do this later. But yeah, that that just goes to show, like he, he would be missed definitely more than you know games, obviously, but practices in the locker room. Florida State and Mike Norvell does a really good job of bringing in transfers. Like Jordan Travis said this last week during Bowl Week, that uh, you know they he does a better job. Norvell does a better job of bringing in good people first, and then talents up next after that. And Jared Verse was one of those because you can't come in cocky like that, man. To Florida State talking all that shit, and then you've got veterans on the team too. You can't do that. You can do it though if you back it up and also be a good, good person uh, off the field. And, you know, he said it to us after a few practices, he said, I, I can talk that, but whenever I, my cleats get off of this grass, it changes, man. And it's been the same way for the coaches, all the other players, assistants, trainers, everybody. Uh, things change once you leave the practice field. And, uh, you know, Jared Verse is a, is a special guy and wherever, whatever ends up happening, you know, going to pull for him, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see next, the next show that we'll have, we'll, uh, be talking about it, whatever decision he ends up making. Uh, let's jump into uh, some basketball. VZ, give us the latest on what you got, my guy. You know, we're still on the countdown for Baba Miller. Supposedly someone with some spray paint in Europe also is waiting on Baba Miller to get some get back well, into the rotation well, well, and play again. One more game. They got to get through Georgia Tech this weekend and then – when you guys are talking on the podcast, I'll be watching Baba Miller's first game uh, at Wake Forest in Winston-Salem. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, the staff and the players are really excited to get him back on the court and see what he looks like. Um, and it's at a position of need because the front court has been dropping like flies. And the two people that are there, Cameron corn has been playing really well, and Nahima Cloud has not. So they need some people on the front line that could just play good minutes. Um, like I said, they're really, really excited to have him back next week obviously he's going to have his freshman moments because you know he's never played college basketball but at the same time as we see with these international prospects a lot of times he's going to be a lot smoother than i think people expect as well what time is that game at next wednesday 9 p.m oh it's a late one well we'll be just about done with the podcast by the time well i'll be in the arena so that's fine (laughs) hop on that wi-fi (laughs) <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not expecting Wake Forest to have the best of internet services. Uh, this is my first time ever covering a game there, so I'm not exactly sure. Um, mm. But I, I don't have the best best hopes for their internet. So it took them three weeks for them to get back to me. Probably not. You still right. have a lot of guests. In yeah, world. and I mean, it's a big game. I think there's going to be a decent amount of scouts there just to see Bob and learn his first game, see how he looks. Um, People are excited. People are really, really excited. And the staff has been 
what what's what's the I think they've been encouraged by the effort the team's playing with. It may not be leading to good results for the most part, like we saw against Duke. Um, but they like how hard the team's playing, and then you get a guy back that's as talented as Miller. Um, you know, who knows what happens these next couple of weeks, but they feel like they're in the right direction. I'm hoping so, man. <laughs> I'm hoping Man, so. So, so, I'm here. so am I. I'll be honest with you. No, VZ, I've been watching. I've been watching a lot of FSU basketball. I promise I have. Um, how is uh, Darren Green looking? What are, we, what are we expecting out of Darren Green in this game? I mean, Darren Green's awesome. <laughs> he's, That's he what just I'm has saying, these, man. Out of, he like, has these stretches. Like, he, he had that stretch in the Duke game in the second half where he had seven points in, like, I think it was 65 seconds. Um, his, his shooting talent's absurd. And Florida State's never had a player like that. Um, Matthew Cleveland's got four straight double doubles for the first time since what was it, like 1993 for a Florida State player. Um, wow! So the pe- the pieces are there. Um, they just they need something. They need something. Need something to push them over. Whether it's the guard play, um, Jalen Worley's been hit or miss the last few games. Um, Caleb Mills has been pretty solid uh, the last few games. Um, it, it, they need a guy like Miller that's just a Swiss Army knife can do literally anything on the basketball court. It's gonna be fun watching him. We'll yeah. we'll make sure to tune in, D Lou. We'll we'll make sure after the pod, after we get done with the special guest, we'll try. take a good peek on it while I'm editing the pod to put upload it. We'll try. And I know I know that team is looking forward to getting Baba out there too. It's been great to see the support from you know the teammates, FSU community, and then you know outside of that too, some of the national media, some of the analysts out there just saying it straight up is absolutely blasphemy. Oh, it's it sucked to had. be it sucked to be at the game this past weekend at Duke and not see Bobo play because that's like when you play college basketball, one of the environments you dream about is playing in Cameron Indoor and playing against yeah. you know that team. And it just seemed on the sidelines like man, the NCAA really robbed this kid of a crazy opportunity. Um, yeah. but I, I know he's gonna come back. And, and be sharp. the The staff's been saying he's he's been great in the strength, uh, strength and conditioning side of things. He's been great on the scout team. Um, I think he's he's added a little bit of weight, which he needed. Um, and it's also nice that you're going to be inserting someone mid season who's got fresh legs. You know, a lot of a lot of guys, you know, as they're starting conference play, they're already starting to feel a little bit tired. That's not going to be the case for Miller. He's going to be ready to get after it. Oh yeah, no, that that'll be that'll be probably. The... But most fun thing to watch him because he's going to be stoked to get out there. So hopefully, hopefully he'll bring some, some new energy to some added energy. Cause it seems like some guys are clicking here. Just got to get it going a little bit more. And I, I, run. I, I, just, I need a win for my sake. Just, yeah, just for my own sake. It, it's been, it has been almost two years since I've seen Florida state basketball win in person. Wake forest is solid though. I know well, if only you come to some football games, VZ, but. No, I'm saying I'm saying in basketball. I I, I was there I for the LSU game. Um, I'm. It's been two almost two years. The last game I saw Jesus, Florida State win in person up. was uh, the UNC ACC tournament game before they lost to Georgia Tech in the championship. Damn. So you just yeah, you're just awful. I one of the one sure of the coaches that? told one of the coaches told me I'm banned. So I was about um, to say I was going to say going is, great. I was going to say someone. You're going to say to him on Wednesday whenever he sees you. <laughs> I was I was going to laugh like a dude. Wear a wig. And I'm just going to laugh like I always do when he walks up and says something to me. Yeah. I don't know how they're allowing you into these games. I really don't. Well, and it, you know, it's a lot with, <laughs> with these uh, road games. It's all up to the away team on whether or not I get in. So, mm-hmm. uh, Carol on here is asking on Facebook, who is your guest next week? Surprise or can you tell us? It is not Baba Miller. No, it's not Baba <laughs> Miller. No, no, it is not. <laughs> it is not Baba Miller. Uh, we'll give a hint at it because we're gonna do a post. We'll probably put out a tweet unless you unless you want to let the listeners know ahead of time, Dustin. I mean, it's kind of been practically confirmed. I just wait. Yeah, I say we wait. We'll just build. Yeah, you up shouldn't have even. You shouldn't have even brought it up. I already did earlier on the show, Dwinkledorf. Yeah, he, he did, yeah he but did you should have brought it up again. Oh, well, Miss Carol. Move on. But you should have been like, we'll give a hint. We'll give a little hint. Uh, I already said the, it. the hint is What's it's the not Baba Miller. That that's your hint. No, he's with the with the Florida State football program. Okay, that's the hint. There you go. The he? No, nope. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, yes, I I don't know. I think. <laughs> yeah. 
that person's gonna kill us if he's yeah oh if that person sees that i don't know uh it will not i will go and tell you though it will not be dustin hill it will not be dustin hill not yet working on that one as far as we know yeah. unicorns can't speak english so um yeah we don't know we will have to see it at once that unicorn arrives i'm sure we will but uh yeah i think that's gonna wrap it up for the show guys appreciate everybody heading into the new year hanging out with us uh, a lot of topics covered tonight i'm sure we'll have a ton more we'll get our, you'll get our reaction from Jared Burst, whatever decision he ends up making. We'll have some more transfer portal news heading into next week. It's just weird not to be able to preview games or get ready for a game anymore. We're now back in this rut, but I do feel like it's going to be a pretty entertaining and fun offseason ahead. I know on our end, we're going to bring you guys a whole ton of content. We're working on a, a project here. Hopefully, we'll be able to share some more on that, but Look for some cool stuff coming in 2023, uh, kind of spreading our wings a little bit with some different stuff and content. So keep an eye out on that. Could have some pretty cool news and announcements soon to give you some info on that side of things. But uh, I think that's going to wrap it up, guys. If you're listening on iTunes, hit that subscribe button. If you're on YouTube, like button over there, subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell, too, if you're on YouTube because it notifies you every time we release a new show, video, everything. So make sure you're liking all that kind of stuff. If you're on Twitter or at here, the Spear, the guy's Twitters are right here. So if you want to tweet us, if we had any bad takes, make sure you tweet us and roast us. But yeah, I appreciate you guys. Y'all are awesome. Hope y'all have a great start to the new year. And we will see you guys next Wednesday at 8 p.m. with our special guest. See you guys. Mama told me,